All right, let's look at another practice problem in profitability uh, ratios. We have been given some numbers here, some information here, and we are going to calculate a set of ratios which are dividend yield ratio, dividend per share, earnings per share, and payout ratio. So let's look at the contents on the slide one by one, understand these, and then we will calculate the ratios. The first item given on the uh, slide is 10% uh, preference shares. What are these 10% preference shares of 10 each? What does this mean? So I'm going to take a new slide to explain this. 10% preference shares of rupees 10 each. The amount is 5 lakhs. What does this mean? This 10% here refers to the fixed dividend fixed dividend that preference shares are uh, eligible for the preference shares mean that they have a preference they have a preference above the equity preference before the equity shareholders what kind of preference are we talking about we're talking about in the event of company making some profit First up, the preference shareholders dividend will be paid. Whatever amount is left will be paid to the equity shareholders. So if we were to look at the uh, net profit, which is given to us, net profit after taxes, and it has been given to us to be 300,000, <coughs> 3 lakhs. Out of this, you will first pay the preference dividend. Dividend to be paid to preference shares. Preference shares dividend. You pay this and then whatever is left will be the earning available to equity shares. Earning available to equity shareholders. This is what it means. Okay, let's move forward. Then it says uh, rupees 10 each. What is this? Now, this is called face value. What is face value? Face value is here is a 100 rupee note. I think you've seen 100 rupee note. On 100 rupee note, it says 100. On its face, it says 100. You go to market, you can buy goods worth 100. The note has a face value of 100. Fine. This face value is not going to change. It's going to stay. However, in case of shares, there is a share certificate. Share certificate which says the share was bought in the beginning for rupees 10 each. Okay. Now, in this case, how many preference shares are there? There are 50,000 preference shares uh, each of rupee 10 and hence 50, uh, 5 lakhs rupees, 5 lakh rupees were invested in preference shares in the beginning. Let's assume there was only one investor. I was the investor. I, I bought 50,000 shares, 10 rupee each, uh, 500,000. 5 lakh was invested in the beginning. Okay. Now, this is called the face value, the value at which the shares were in the very beginning when the shares were issued by the company. They were purchased. This is the face value. Okay. Why is this face value important? The face value is important because when the dividend is going to be declared, that dividend is going to be declared as a percentage of the face value. So here, preference shares have a dividend of 10%. So 10% dividend means the dividend on preference share is equal to this 500,000 multiplied by 10%. So 50,000 is the dividend to be paid to preference shares. And if you want to know the dividend per share for preference only, not equity shares. This is preference only. Then you have rupees 10 per share multiplied by 10%. So rupees 1 per share is the dividend per share. And there are 50,000 shares. So 50,000 rupees is the preference dividend. Okay. And since we have calculated this number, I'm going to go to this slide and write 50,000. This is the preference dividend which has to be paid. And then you are left with 250,000. 2 lakhs and 50,000, which is the earning available to the equity shareholders. Okay. 
So uh, now we have understood uh, the first line here. The second line says 60,000 equity shares of 10 inch. Again, this is the face value for equity shares. Both equity and preference shares will have a face value. And this is the total uh, value of the equity shares. So in the beginning, say you were the equity investor, you had uh, bought 60,000 shares, 10 rupee each, 6 lakhs was invested in the business. Then it says profit after tax. This number we know what uh, how it is arrived at. Then you have equity dividend paid. Okay, this is new 20%. So on uh, the 10% preference dividend is something which is fixed. Does not matter what is the profit made during the year. 10% of the face value of the preference shares will have to be paid to the preference shareholders. On the other hand, in case of equity shareholders, this decision of 20% is taken by the board of directors. Board of directors. The board of directors decide at the end of the year that after paying for all the other uh, stakeholders, uh, this is the net profit, uh, this is the preference dividend, now we are left with X amount of money. Out of that, you know, how much can we pay as dividend? So 20% dividend again is not as a percentage of the leftover uh, profit, but as a percentage of face value. So equity dividend is going to be equal to 20% of the face value. Face value, uh, total face value is uh, 6 lakhs. So 6 lakhs is going to be dividend. Dividend at the rate 20% of the face value of the share. So 20% is going to be 120,000. This is 20%, one fifth of 6 lakhs. All right. When you pay this, then you are left with, you know, the remaining, which is 130. This is retained earnings during the year. Retained earnings. All right. So equity dividend 20%, we have figured this number out as well. Finally, you have market price, which is simply the price at which share is being bought and sold in the market. Now, there is a stuff called market price and there is this face value. What is the difference between these two? Let me clarify that as well. So let me use this side. There is something called face value, which was rupee 10. And we've understood what face value is. Now let's say shares were issued way back in 2015. And now we are in 2020. I want to sell my share. Where do I sell my share? In order to sell the share, you go to market. This market is called secondary market or the stock market. I go to stock market, my share has been listed online and I can sell this share to anybody else who wants to buy it. Now, I invested at 10 rupees five years back. The company has done well. I do not want to sell this share at 10 rupees. I will certainly sell this at, you know, what, 50 rupees now, for example. So if somebody is willing to buy at 50 and the transaction takes place, so now we will start calling it a market value or a market price of the share in the stock market. All right. This is how the market price is determined. The share certificate will continue to say uh, 10 as the face value of the share, but in the market, you can sell it for more. So an additional premium of 40 rupees. This is the increase in the value of the share over uh, a period of five years. So this is how face value and market value are different. There is another term which is called book value. Book value per share. The book value per share is calculated as follows. You take shareholders funds, which is the capital plus reserve and surpluses and divide that by number of shares. Okay, what does it mean? Shareholder fund is equal to the capital invested plus the reserves and surpluses divided by number of shares. Essentially, this capital was the actual capital that was invested uh, in the beginning. And over a period of time, more money has been earned and retained by the company, which also belongs to the shareholders. So we're just adding this increase, the profits made during the five years, whatever profits have been retained after distributing to other stakeholders, the total profit uh, available at this time are added to capital and then divided by number of shares and you have the book value. 
So just understand, just remember the difference between these three. Uh, book value is something which is also frequently disclosed by the companies or if you go to websites, they will talk about book value. So don't, don't be worried. Uh, book value only means the uh, only reflects the increase in the face value of the share by the amount of reserve and surpluses. All right. I think we are all set. We have to uh, calculate uh, these uh, uh, four uh, ratios and we're going to get started. The first ratio we're going to calculate is earning per share and I'm uh, going in a sequence which is logical as well. So earning per share is going to be equal to earnings available. Earnings available to equity shareholders divided by the number of equity shares which is equal to so earnings to equity is uh, 250,000 divide this by the number of equity shares and number of equity shares are 60,000 so 60,000 and you have the earnings per share this comes out to be 4 this is uh, 10 and 1 and let's say 7 4.17 somewhere around it so this is earning per share per share here uh, next up we can calculate the dividend dividend payout ratio so we know that some earning is available and that earning is 250,000 uh, however we are not going to pay out all the money to the equity shareholders the actual money paid to the equity shareholder is 120,000 so you have dividend dividend paid to equity and divide this by the earnings earnings to equity so potentially all the money belonged to the equity shareholders but only a part of it has been uh, distributed as a dividend and remaining amount has been retained so dividend paid is only 120000 as a percentage of earning to equity which was 250000 here out of 250 120 is being paid so if you multiply this by 100 you get a dividend payout ratio so I have the calculator here. This comes out to be 120,000 divided by 250,000. This is 48%. So out of the earnings available to the equity, 48% is being distributed, is being paid out. So this is the dividend payout ratio. Next up is dividend per share. Dividend per share is equal to dividend paid to equity divided by number of equity shares number of equity shares so dividend paid is 120,000 and you divide this by number of equity shares which are 60,000 and you have 2 per share rupees 2 per share is the uh, dividend per share and uh, finally you have uh, dividend yield ratio dividend yield ratio is equal to dividend per share divided by the market price of the share so rupees 2 is dividend per share and market price was 30 I guess. yes 30 divided by 30 and uh, this multiplied by 100 so this gives you how much 15 6 so 6 percent yeah about 6.6 6 percent is the dividend yield this is the return uh, that you would uh, make on uh, uh, the the investment in this share so 6.66 6.67 percentage all right so these are uh, the numbers so what is happening here is the company is earning uh, per equity share it is earning 4 rupees out of which it is paying out 48 percent which is uh, 2 rupee per share uh, and the new investor who will want to buy the share uh, has a possibility of making 6.67% return if he buys the share at 30 rupee per share. 
So uh, in this video, we looked at the profitability position. We looked at specifically these four ratios using the numbers. We've learned the uh, you know sequence in which these numbers can be these uh, indicators can be calculated. We've also learned the concepts of uh, face value, market value, and book value. You have also gone through this process to understand how profit is distributed, how profit is appropriated amongst the stakeholders, and how the retained earnings come to come into pay. All right. I hope you had good learning in this uh, practice problem. I'll see you in the next video.